Right, let's start it. I'm just going to do a quick video. Um, I spent an hour setting up some force feedback in Race Room. How's it going? How are you, YouTube? Little quick video today. Um, I don't normally upload these, but I thought it might come in handy. And I know I've had a good load of reviews from some of my force feedback settings in the past. So, just going to run you through them quickly. G29, Logitech, Race Room, PC. It's all in the title. If you're here, you're probably here for a reason. So we're just going to jump straight in, no messing around, get you copy, so you just copy them over, see how you feel, go out and maybe uh, improve your lap times, make the game feel a bit better, um, all that good shit. What do you reckon? Pretty good? Let's go, let's go, super fast then. We're going to make this video no longer than like two, three minutes max. So we're into race room. Uh, we're going to go into the options menu on the top right. I'm going to go into control settings. As you can see here, I've got the Logitech G29 driving force. I've also got a dark tornado joystick as my handbrake and some extra buttons, but you can ignore that. And the sim pedals, which are Thrustmaster. Um, so, but none of the force feedback settings I'm going to be going through today, anything to do with the pedals or any of the assignments. So if you've got a Logitech G29, just copy this. So we're going to then go to force feedback on the right, general force feedback settings. So the first one, force feedback, you definitely want that on. Inverted force feedback on with the Logitech. It seems to work with inverted. Otherwise, it looks like you're pushing, or it feels like you're pushing away from the corners. Gamepad rundles off. That doesn't um, have any effect unless you've got a controller in anyway. Force feedback intensity. I've got 100%. Uh, smoothing. I've got turned off completely. Force feedback spring turned off completely. Force feedback damper turned off completely. Now these are the important bit. The steering force settings. Steering force intensity. I've left at 100%. Um, it might be worth putting it up or down. Depending on your preference and how much you like the wheel to rock and roll, you can also map into in the control assignments a force feedback multiplier, which when I was setting it up, I put on uh, up and down on the D pad there so you can adjust it. Um, but I'd leave that on 100% as I find the multiplier really boosts it up too much as well. So if you can leave that on 100% and the force multiplier on one, it seems to feel best. Force feedback minimum force 15%. The way I set that is drive along at two mile an hour, get the graph up. And you should feel at like two to five mile an hour. You should just feel the slight, slight wobble in the steering wheel, like the forces, just like the steering, just knocking around a little bit, and just the vibrations of the engine. If you turn them up a little bit, you should just feel that. That's the minimum force that boosts the lowest level of signals to a level which you can feel it on your wheel. Now, if you've got an expensive wheel, the range is going to be huge, so you'll feel the tiniest movements and the massive forces. The Logitech G29, the tiny movements just get completely lost. So if you boost that minimum force, you can feel the tiny little motions. So I got taught to set that up by just driving as slow as possible and set it so you don't want the wheel going like when you drive along, just underneath that. Just so you can just feel something, that's how you set the minimum force. 15% seems to be perfect on this game. Other games like ACC on PS4, I was running about 12%, so it seems fairly consistent. Whereas the new AC, I run like 0% minimum force, so it does depend per game. But this, you know, that's a pretty solid way of setting it up. Um, understeer, I've, understeer effect is how quickly force feedback decreases when losing... I'm, I'm going on forever. So three minutes, three minutes spent. How quickly force feedback decreases when losing front wheel grip. I'll put that on 30%. I don't really like that effect. If you wanted that more, then maybe go up to 50, maybe 70. Um, but I find 30 is fine. You know when you're understeering, you can see it. Vertical load, I kept on 80%. Um, I messed around with getting an uneven ratio between vertical and lateral force load. But I found just keeping these even made a really, really nice force feedback. And going up to 100% made it a bit muddy. Whereas sticking them both at 80 made it absolutely lovely. So vertical load and lateral force, I put both on 80%. Steering rack, I didn't really feel. I feel like it's an effect that they kind of added. Like, if your car's on the wonk, it kind of puts a little bit of wonk force onto your steering wheel. So it just, like, leans a little bit, like... It's just a little bit of like track. It's almost static track wheel angle force. So adds a little bit, pretty much does nothing from not to 100%. I put it on 30. I did play around with 50%, but I found on 30, it just, it gives a little bit of extra room for the other effects. So play around with that where you want. Slip effect, these are the settings. So these are like your after effects to give the game a little bit of texture, a little bit of dynamics and to, you know, just a little bit of something else at the steering wheel that um, defines it from other force feedbacks. The slip effects I put down to 20%. I don't really like, like I said about the understeer effect, I don't really like the way it feels. I think it affects your um, uh, 
it muddies up the rest of the of the force feedback. Engine vibrations I put down to zero because I really don't want anything rattling in this wheel. Maybe if I had like a Fanatec or a belt drive system I'd consider maybe 10%. Curb vibrations 20% seems like plenty. You can tell when you're going over a curb, perfect. Shift effect zero, I don't want it donking around when I shift and that. I just, <clears throat> I mean, you can feel it anyway. I've got magnetic paddles, you know, the steering wheel junks when I shift, that's fine. Collision effect 200, don't hit a wall. Absolutely fine, not not too much. Um, you could turn that down to 100% or if you've been a wuss about your motor or whatever. But there you go, all the settings are right there. We've gone through them pretty well. Uh, what's in advanced settings? I'll just go through these as well. H pattern shift I've got turned on. Speed sensitive steering I've got zero. Minimum steering speed 101. These are all standard. Minimum steering speed. Uh, max steering speed 299. Analog sector one. So zero, zero, zero for all the analog sectors. Four on the return multiplier. That's just standard. Steering sensitivity at 50%. Throttle sensitivity at 50. Throttle release rate 80. Brake sensitivity at 50. Brake, brake release rate 80. These are all standard. Clutch sensitivity 50, steering dead zone, all these dead zones I've got on zero, but you might want to put a little bit of dead zone on the brakes, the clutch and the throttle if you're running G29 pedals and they're a little bit scratchy after time. And you can also adjust the upper dead zone as well, pull these back so you don't have to put the pedals all the way down. So you're using a little bit of the, the good bit of the potentiometer that you probably still get in your Logitech, whereas the end bits are probably almost trash now if it's more than a year old. Uh, double shift prevention 0 0.05 seconds, throttle upper dead zone 100%, brake upper dead zone 100%, useful for load cell pedals, look at that, look. see I could pull that down now with my load cell, so I only just want it, yeah that seems about right then, it just bottoms out, as soon as you go dunk, there, lovely job, uh, yeah perfect, edit assignment so you can see my assignments here, Right, boys, you don't need to see any of those, do you? Absolutely no help. The only thing I did do while setting it up was this, the force feedback meter I put on F, just so I could visually see the force feedback meter and I put the force feedback multiplier on plus and minus, so I can mess around with that, but I'm gonna leave that on 100% now. Um, so cool, there you go. If you don't wanna see anything else, those are your settings. Getting plugged in, let us know in the comments. Maybe stick a like if you found this a good video. If you want to see more like this, because I do loads of games, all sorts on PlayStation and PC with the Logitech. And I'm always happy to set up force feedback because I think I think I'm getting a dab hand at it now. And I like my settings, so hopefully other people do. Um so yeah, if you enjoyed this and you find it helpful, or you've got a uh, review on how you felt my settings or any improvements or anything else you think I've missed or not covered properly, stick it in the comments. Um if you found it helpful stick a like if you didn't like them stick a dislike please because then i know just just tap some stuff please go on do it do it do it right let's do a quick lap let's do a quick lap there's no point talking about it they're actually uh doing something good is it so this video has now gone for three minutes to a little bit longer hope you're gonna hang with me it's all right it's all right oh also if you want to see me stream come over to facebook ben game 64 or obviously here, Automotive Addiction on YouTube. And I do have a Twitch as well, BenGame64, but I flick around between all three. So you'd be lucky if you catch me. Same as on track. Right, let's um let's jump in then. Let's jump in to the game. Let's just quick jump in with some practice. Uh the Celine, select AI. What have we got? AI difficulty. What's hard? Let's just put them on like a hundred. 33 opponents, okay. Uh, yep, yeah, let's just go. So we'll do a quick quick couple of laps of the indie track, the Browns Hatch, because this is the one that I set up the force feedback because of the massive dip down the first corner. You can analyze the uh, the the effect on the force feedback when the weight comes off and on the vehicle. Or not the lateral force, the other force. And you can also judge the lateral force change when you're going up the elevations and down the elevations. And that's how I'll, this is the track I used to set this up with the Celine. So I'm hoping it doesn't feel absolutely god awful on other cars. But I'm going to be jumping into the um, the rated mode, as Race Room now has a rated mode. I'll be jumping into that later, and we're testing it out. So if you want to come watch that, then get over to Facebook and come and have a watch. So you see in the top left, you've got this force feedback thing there. But the bottom is your actual wheel movement. Then you get your forces will appear on top. So with this you will see like the tops are slightly um slightly oh I'm not impressing the right ignition button. 
we're, we're cutting off a little bit of the the texture of the top feedback but you know you know when you're doing stuff wrong I'd rather have a lot of uh, control and feel in in the main bit that I use or in the middle ground so it's nice that you've got a visual representation here with the graph that you can actually see what you're doing it does really help so hopefully the AI won't be too slow here the force feedback does feel like pretty um pretty low it should warm up a little bit once the tires tires warm up we start to get a little bit more grip see a little bit of rumble effects going over the curb just feel that but not too much oh it's the indie circuit i nearly went all the way around and you can see you just get a little bit of feeling of lightness over the top I do feel like i might want to go up a tiny little bit on the strength if if anything if my own criticism of my own setup here it's a little bit weak so I could up it there I've got 1.1 times FFB multiplier now so I'd probably I'd probably leave that available just so I could boost it a little bit Yeah, you can feel the rumbles of the curbs, you can feel yourself understeering. Oh, I keep thinking it's not the indie circuit. And over the top, you can kind of, you can just feel it getting a bit light. Is it like the 1.2? I mean, I do like heavy force feedback though. Yeah, maybe it is. Just ma worth mapping that and just seeing how, how it reacts to your Logitech as well. Same with the minimum force, if you've got a slightly older wheel or slightly newer wheel, some of the settings might vary a tiny bit, but I think these are pretty pretty good settings and everything's working within its kind of like optimum window here. Yeah, maybe they are a little bit light. Let's push it a little bit. Let's try and try and losing a little bit of that top texture now. Go down to 1.1 and force feedback multiplier. Let's actually try and get some speed up. Oh no, that wasn't good. Jesus. What did I miss in there? Sneaky. Ah, I got you. Go, a little Celine. So, yeah, I feel like the game's given me enough information in the areas where I need it here. I suppose my crit if my only criticism of my own setup, I suppose, is. Is a little bit weak. Why don't we? Why don't we just try going up? Let's just try going up. Uh, control settings, force feedback, force feedback on, intensity, percentage of the steering. So we could just up the intensity a little bit. I'm wondering. Put these up to eighty-five. I think the intensity is on like 150 standard. Just try boosting that up a little bit. I'll probably end up going back, going back down. But right, so I'm dropping the FFB multiplier back down to one. I've put the the vertical and the lateral forces up to was it 85. I'm just increase the strength a little bit. Yeah, still feels really good there actually. It feels a little bit better there, like more of a, a bit more weighted. We might be chopping off a little bit more of the feedback here though. We'll have a look on the graph. See, it just peaks right on that red line there. Yeah, you've got the couple of spikes that go over, but... I mean, they're not, to me, they're not areas 
where I risk losing control. The main areas where I risk losing control is like now. And it's just hovering under the red line, like when I'm giving it the beans out of the corner, which means I'm getting everything the game is trying to tell me, and in the braking zone as well. Whereas, yeah, some of the points where the force feedback... Oh, it's just, my driving's gone to the pot here. You know, it will go outside of the zones, but as long as it's not a, a, a moment that's going to cause you to lose lots of control, it shouldn't cause an issue. Yeah, it still, still feels really light. Probably go up more on the steering forces. Might just try going... Force feedback. Might just try going up to like 130. And then we'll go back down to 80. Because then that keeps the ratios here pretty good. See how that feels. Oh, that's stiffer. Let's see if we're more out of the red range now. Yeah, a little bit more out of the red range now. So maybe probably 120. Like for feel, yeah. You see the peaks are just like we're just missing that top top layer of texture now. So I'd say once if we just go down to well, we can't go down below one on the multiplier. So yeah, I'd say between 100% and 120% with these settings. Feel really good. I can totally race like this. In fact, I'll probably just bump it up to like... I don't know, would I race like... No, it feels too stiff. Yeah, I can feel myself losing a little bit of the understeer then. No. Definitely one times FFB multiplier. 80% on the vertical and lateral forces. And then tune the strength. Could definitely go down from 150% though, I think. Oh, there we go. Finally crashed. Not a bad little go. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. There's a little video on Race Room. I'll see you in the ranked races in the European servers. Thanks for watching the video. Um, if you did like it, maybe stick a subscribe. If you super liked it and you want to see me race as well, come over to BenGame64 on Facebook and BenGame64 on Twitch. And, yeah, I'll see you soon. Longer than three minutes. God, I'm rubbish. Bye bye. See you again. Bye 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 b